Uh, thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey the Podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk about the role of the Game Master. Um, we all know what the Game Master does. She sits behind the screen and tells the story to the players. She describes um, what's going on. She interprets the rules. Um, but beyond that, what is her role at the table? Yeah. Is, is she responsible for everybody having fun? Is she, is she is she just another player? Is she the captain of the ship? Yeah, you know it, it's funny. I I I've always felt that this question is in the past was kind of a silly question to ask. Okay. Because I always felt that the game master's role is always to make the other to make the party, uh, the group of players have a good time. You know, and if they're not having a good time, your job as a game master is to find out why mm -hmm. and how can I fix that so that the next time it won't be so bad. I, I I'm surprised that that sometimes when I go to conventions or when I go online, especially on Facebook, especially on Facebook, <laughs> uh, when I go to see some of the game master like forums they have there or Dungeons and Dragons forums, the question always comes out about how to be. It's like some people ask generally like how do I become a good game master, uh, and and then you hear people talk about like oh you should be like. The, like you know the novelist or you should be like you're like a god you oh. know, so this is your job no, and, no, no, and no, I think no. people kind of I don't know I think they're putting too much emphasis on like this like get, yeah being a game master yeah, it's pretty cool it's great I like it you know but I I'm, I'm, I don't see myself as uh, a writer that's not my role a writer is a writer a game master uh, is char is in charge of making sure that the game that they're they're, they're facilitating runs well and everyone's having a good time. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. I think um, the last thing, uh, well, <laughs> one of the last things that a GM should try to be is a novelist. Hmm. Um, I love novelists. I'm a novelist. But um, not at the table. Yeah. And what I mean by a novelist is someone who has crafted this wonderful story and this, possibly this wonderful entire world, and this fantastic, intricate background, and and these really detailed, wonderful characters, which is all great. Yes, by all means, do that. The problem is when they then insist on telling you about them, and those become more important than the players. Yes, I've I've seen this over and over again. That you know, for instance, the GM will have a character that they really that they love. Perhaps, and this is the worst, when it was a character that they used to play. It used to be a PC in somebody else's game, and now it's an NPC in the GM's game. It's, 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 it's the DM PC. It's got a name. Yeah. And, and they're always there to solve the problem, and, and, and they're always tagging along with the party and, and showing them up, and they're more powerful, and they're better, and they're more important, and it just makes the PCs feel like they're not the stars of their own story like it's it, the story's about you know egoist the wizard <laughs> we're just <laughs> following him around yeah. um so that's the problem i you know um sometimes it's the setting or even the uh, the the adventure i was in a, a convention game and um i just couldn't I, I, I couldn't believe it the guy who was running the game uh just kept pulling us along you know, from scene to scene, um, describing in detail exactly what was going on, but not letting us do anything about it. And he'd he'd um, he'd get sidetracked in the middle of the game to tell us about the setting. He'd just go on and on about it, and we're just sitting at the table going, "Okay, okay, can I do something now? Can my player, you know, can my character do anything?" <laughs> um, and, you know, he had all this, he had all these famous illustrations that he was using in his art. And he's like, oh, yeah, see? And it looks like this. And it looks, and yeah, that's, that's great art, but we're not. And, you know, he got so excited that he would show us art from things that we hadn't seen yet. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, and when you get to the castle, it's going to look like this. Like, Are we at the castle yet? No. <laughs> Okay, that's great art. You know that's commercially available. I can actually go see that anytime I want. Uh, you know, he didn't even draw it or anything. That's funny. Wow. Um, you know, it's so so many 
you know, not the GMs, but, um, you know, the writers of role-playing games. So many of them are frustrated novelists. They just want to tell you about their fantastic world and their fantastic story. And you know what? I don't care. Yeah. Players are there to tell their own stories. Even if their own story is cliche and boring and illogical and stupid and doesn't make any sense, it's theirs and so they enjoy it. Yeah. That's why it's so it can be so mind-numbing to hear somebody else tell you a story about their character and yet they think it's exciting. Oh. Because it is. If yeah. you're in the story, it's fantastic. Yeah. Even if objectively it's a terrible story. Mm. And if you're the DM, your job is to help them tell their stories. Yeah. Even if it's not as good as your story. You know, if you have a great story, go write a book. <laughs> and, you know, write it down and sell it and make, a, you know, a million dollars. But I, at the table, you're telling the story about the, the players. I had a, I played with a game master once where he made this, homebrew this whole world. And uh, it, you could tell that he's writing a book because you're playing a character. And you're playing a character that he picked out for you. Oh, dear. And you couldn't do anything. Yeah. You could fight certain battles yep. that he set up, that the game master set up. And uh, I remember there was this one point where, like, dude, this one tunnel, there's a dragon there with treasure. And I was just so bored. And I was like, listen, I said, hey, listen, let's all go attack the dragon. I don't care if it's suicide. I just want to have fun doing it. I just want to have fun. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to have a good time. Yeah, and, they, and, they, he was, and he was like, no. And then it was like, when I tried to do it anyway, it was a, somehow he uh, retconned it so that I, we were all back. And that was another thing, too. Like, there was no death. Every time one of our characters was close to death, suddenly we were miraculously healed. And then I was like, okay, I'm not playing this again because I'm bored. This is yeah, stupid. Yeah. I'm just wasting my time. Exactly. Everybody's there to have fun. Yes. And, uh, you know, as the GM, you're kind of in charge. I mean, I don't want to get egotistical or anything, but you're the guy telling the story. You're kind of in, you're kind of your job to make sure that everybody's having fun. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously some people will insist on not having fun sometimes something's seriously wrong and they're not going to have fun but you should try to figure out what's wrong and help them to have fun as long as it their fun doesn't interfere with everybody else's fun yep. it's, it's 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 a tricky thing but yeah. you know um that's the role of the gm i think is ultimately just to make sure people are having fun uh, the 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 um the interesting questions are how do you do that yeah. How do you make sure everybody's having fun? And one of them is interpreting the rules. You have to interpret the rules fairly so that people know when they do this, this will happen. Yeah. You know? Yeah, um, and, uh, some become rule lawyers, which is weird. Seeing a game master being uh, like, very specific about rules. And that's fine. I understand that the world needs structure. But sometimes you may have to bend it a bit if you want your players to have fun. You yeah, know? You, you can't, that's true. And you, you don't want the game to be locked, um, locked down. Bogged down. Bogged thing, down. <laughs> you don't want you don't want your game to be bogged down with like trying to find out like what like rules. You know, like you don't want to spend half an hour trying to find a, a sentence on a certain page in a certain book about a condition of your character uh, when that could be spent on much better things. Unless everybody really wants to. True. This true. I mean, you know, I I'm thinking I'm with you. I'm like, oh, there's my first thought was, oh, there's nothing more boring than going through the rule book for 20 minutes to find the exact rule. But then I think back to, to high school. I'm thinking, you know, I could see us stopping the game to argue about the rule and figure this out exactly how. And we were having fun. We yeah. were having fun looking at how exactly the rules work and how, how this comes out. And this was really important. This is whether the dragon lives, you know, to, to breathe fire again or the dragon dies before he gets another attack. Hmm. And, you know, that's because does this haste spell affect the wizard? And the, you know, the, the chain of events. Yeah. But we were all really, really enjoying that. And it was all really important to us. Yeah. So if everybody's really en enjoying it, then go for it. You know, and that goes for, for anything. I, I ran a session where um, this is just after my player's our whole group really got into role playing. Uh, suddenly, everything was all about what's what would a character do, and uh, I presented these characters with kind of a dilemma. Right, they found this sword 
you know, it wasn't a magical sword, but it was a really important sword. And if the and and there was a, a rebel leader who was trying to get the sword to rally people against this king. And it wasn't really their problem, and so they were trying to figure out what to do with it. They literally spent an entire session sitting in a cabin arguing about what to do with the sword. <laughs> yeah, but they had a fantastic time. And I had a good time, too, because they were so invested in my game. Granted, I, it was a little, sometimes I got a little boring for me. I was, I was down to role-playing the weather. It's, it's <laughs> raining outside, guys. That's, um, okay, fine, never mind. <laughs> but, you know, it's a really good feeling when they're invested in the game. If, yeah. they're, if they're really invested in the game, no matter how they're invested in the game, that, that feels good as a GM. Yeah, so. I, 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 I game mastered Middle Earth. Um, and it, sometimes the whole session is just politics, talking about what to do about this town, how to fix it, um, yep. uh, who should do what, what should do what, how can we build up the defenses, and um, and how should we work with neighboring towns? And I, I sometimes I'll be like two, three hours, and that that's a lot of fun. There's a lot of to me, it's great for me because for me, it's a lot of role playing. Mm -hmm. So yep. I, get, I get to do like NPCs on the spot, like oh, the governor of this this town. Here, here yeah, you go. Here he is. Here he is. Yeah. <laughs> my problem was I didn't have any NPCs in the cabin. <laughs> that was my, I should have introduced somebody. It was just the player character. <laughs> you know. but, but yeah, again, if, if that's the way the game is going, they're having fun. Just just roll with it. Yeah, just you know? just go with it. And, you know, and it's important to know when to step out of the way, when to when to when to give up. Yeah. You know the 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 joke is that the GM is God. Yeah. Right, and it's not a joke. It's true in a way. Uh, you know, you have ultimate power over these characters. That's why I always found, you know, kind of an adversarial relationship between players and GMs just kind of ridiculous because yeah. the GM's got all the power. So how is there any sort of dynamic? But, um, but the point is, you need to know when to step out of the way yeah. or to let the players do what the players want to do. As long as everybody's on board. You know, one of the things you got to watch out for is those two players want to get together and do something that will make these two players miserable. Yeah. Then you've got to step in and, and kind of work something out. Speaking of the adversary, as being the adversary to your, to, your, to your players, I think, to me, the best game master to have ever existed is that that, that short guy from Dungeons and Dragons, the cartoon. <laughs> the, the Dungeon yeah, Master? Yeah. <laughs> the actual Dungeon Master, the, actual the little dungeon guy? Master. Because think about what he does. He tells him some riddles, tells him a way to go, and then that's it. He just lets then him he just disappears. Right, 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 you got to deal with it. You know? <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> you want to get back home? Do this. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. what? No, wait, no. We have questions. We have ah. questions. I'm like, nope. Nope. Not going to answer anything. <laughs> you know? And I, I, think, I think that's how I, how, I think subconsciously how I play. Because I, I always play like um sort of against them. I always threaten, like, I'm going to kill your characters in this game. Oh, 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 oh well, yeah. yeah it's, but it's, I, I don't really, do. yeah. I don't really, really try to kill a character. Sure. That would be, that would be terrible because that's, that's really terrible game mastery if you're just trying to uh, do that in my opinion. But, well, uh, you know, it's, 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 I don't uh, think they ask for it. <laughs> sure. But I mean, even, even then it is, um, it's, it's like a cat and a mouse, right? Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to kill them, they're dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you exactly. you're just declare them dead. You're dead. Yeah. How? You don't and know. I, you're dead. And I think I say that really just so I let them know that to take this game seriously. Yeah. So, like, yeah. you know, if you think about jumping over a cliff and you're going to survive, probably not. No, not unless we're playing a really silly game. Yeah. Unless you have, you have Featherfall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can there are certain ways through this. But. Yeah. But uh, but I, 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 I play that role, but I what I really do is that I want to help them have fun, you yep. know, without being intrusive. At the yeah. same time, yeah. you know, it's, it's a weird balance I have to play with a little bit. Yeah. But um, but uh, yeah, that's how I, I see the role, like yeah. kind of yeah. my role a little bit. Like I'm, I'm a, sort of a jerk, but I'm a, I'm a good jerk. Yeah. Well, uh, and another uh, more detailed uh, thing that I think the DM needs to do, and and I don't think this gets played up or um, nearly enough in uh, books and things like role playing books. I don't see. I don't see too many people saying this. You're, one of your most important jobs as a, as a DM is to interpret the dice. Yes. That's, right? That's a good point. You know, not, simply not just hit or miss, but how well do they hit? And, and more importantly, how do they fail? Mm. You know, sometimes the players will do something um, and, and, you know, that they should succeed in. And, and the first problem is you probably shouldn't have them roll 
Yes. Unless you're you're willing to describe defeat. So, but if they're but if they're like you know, okay, I'm going to uh, you know, oh, well, a silly example is that somebody said they were one of my players said they were going to go pick some flowers. And I don't know if I was dumb enough to call for this or they did it anyway, but they picked up, they rolled the dice, and they botched. And we all went, you botched your flower picking roll? What the hell? <laughs> How did that happen? And I yeah. said, well, okay, you know what? There was a snake in those flowers and they bit you. Mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, it's not enough to say, look at the dice and say you succeeded or failed. You then have to work that into the story. How did they fail? How did they succeed? Yeah. Um, and, and you have to be careful about when they roll. I had my, my poor brother um, played an entire game. It was a very, it was a low magic world. And he had a magic sword. And uh, the, the, the particular power of the sword was that it could, you know, cut through magic. It, it was kind of an anti-magic sword. Okay. Right. But there was so little magic in the game that it, it didn't come up at all. You know, I mean, there was magic, but the way it played out was he never even got to use it. So at the very end, like the, the mm. big climactic battle at the end, somebody casts a spell out and he goes, ha ha, and he pulls out his sword and and he has this whole handful of dice and he's rolling and he completely fails. Mm. And we all just went, uh, um, <laughs> like, you know, you can hear that wah, wah, wah music. <laughs> like, it turns out. That wasn't a magical sword this whole time. Your grandfather sold the magical sword for drinking money, and, and he made a fake. <laughs> and that's what you've got. It wasn't, uh, it's not really the sword. <laughs> I just had to deal with that failure. Like, oh, no. No, but that was a great way of uh, explaining that failure. Yeah. How do I, what, do, what does this mean? Hmm. How, could he, how could it possibly have failed? But um, so you know you have to interpret the dice. That's 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 important, and I think that's why we roll. That's why I roll dice anyway. Mm-hmm. I roll dice because there's always a chance to be surprised, and I like that surprise. Otherwise, there are diceless systems where you say, "Oh, you've got your 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 ability is this high, and the task is like this, so you so you succeed." You know that's that's probably realistic. You know, it's probably going to happen a lot of times, but you don't get the surprise rolls. It's the surprise rolls that that I really like. Hmm. So, what do you think about games with a reduced or even no role for a game master? Reduced or no role for a game yeah, master? Yeah, like uh, DM-less games, games oh, without DMs. I or, don't like those. Or games. That have a lot of player control. Um, you mean sort of games like Gloomhaven and um, uh, no, I mean like role playing games with a lot of where the players can spend brownie points or something to actually change things in the game. Yeah, you, know, you can say, okay, well the 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 building's on fire. What are you gonna do? And you can and somebody can say, ah, oh, well, there's a parachute in the closet. Oh, okay. I guess there's a parachute in the closet. Uh, th- there are some games like there's a game called Leverage based on the TV show that lets yeah. you has a very interesting mechanic and uh, where you can like <laughs> if you want to achieve something in the game you because I don't know if you've seen the show the show no. pretty much like all right so how they they finish the caper and you're like how do you finish the caper because we we caught you here and saw you there and then they you see the the, the flashbacks of how oh, they did oh it. okay it's it's the it's the um the caper flashback yeah, yeah. i'm familiar with the technique yeah so in that case i think that's great because it's kind of fun and seeing yeah, Tim, yeah. Tim explain the scenario yeah that works but dmless games like that i personally uh i don't know i i feel like having it needs to be a human element involved yeah in that yeah. because I think I could get all right. Fine, that you do that for the adventure. The adventure might be great, but then it has no replayability, and I I wasted like whatever money for that adventure because I. But what's great about I have certain adventures that I've replayed over and over again, mm-hmm. and it's always different because there's humans involved. <laughs> there's, <laughs> yes. someone, there's a game yes, master definitely. involved that's yeah. helping making decisions. So it yeah. always makes uh, that scenario fun, you know. You know, I'm pretty sure if I played Tomb of Horrors with uh, another game master. 
Uh, it would be a very different experience. I'm sure it would be. It wouldn't feel the same game at all. No. You know? No, it totally um, wouldn't be. Same thing with, like, I, I know you've run some modules for your DCC, right? Yep. You know, I bet you if, if I if I Game Master it, you play a very different game. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. You know, but if we play something from a, like a, a DM-less, I've seen those like DM-less like games, I, I, I don't know, I just don't see the value in it. Fair you enough, know? fair enough. You know, I, I do understand why they exist, though, because I, I have come across groups where people don't want a Game Master. Mm -hmm. There's too much pressure or for yeah. different reasons, or they feel they're not able to do so. Yeah. They're, they want to play, they don't want a Game Master. <laughs> well, that is always the sad thing, yeah. You yeah. Know? But I, So I understand that, and it, and I, I don't want to I don't want to down it and say, like, that, that should never exist. If, if you know, if you want to play that, play that. I understand that there's no Game Master there. Yeah. But uh, if you ask me by choice, like, no, I'll, I'll you know, I'll... I'm always up to Game Master, if someone asks me. Sure, sure. <laughs> I w um, just before we're done, um, I was in a bookstore, and um, I was in the stacks, and so I couldn't see who was talking. And uh, I could hear the, um, uh, the clerk of the, it was a game store, and I could hear him talking to somebody, and somebody asked him what game, what GM stood for. And he said, game moderator. And I came shooting out of the stack <laughs> with fire coming out of my nose. Like, I am not a game moderator, damn it. <laughs> no one's going to neuter my power like that. I'm thinking, I'm the game master, damn it. And I get running out, and, I, and in an instant, I see what's going on. There's two, you know, muggle parents. <laughs> Yeah. And they're talking to the 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 the, uh, the clerk, and he wisely substituted moderator to make the game seem friendlier. And yeah. so I instantly just bit my tongue and faded back into the stack without saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, I did I did have that really strong reaction. Like you know, I'm the because the GM's got an authority, and I think the GM has to have that authority. Yeah. You know. Someone at the table has to be the person who says, no, this is what this means. This is how we're going to play this. Okay. So. Huh? So that's the, that's the role of GM. Oh, yeah. Ruthless God. No, wait, no, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what we said, is it? No, that's the, he's, 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 he's the uh, benevolent dictator there to make sure everybody's having a good time. Oh, that, that, that works as well. Benevolent dictator. <laughs> Well, okay, go out there and be benevolent dictators. <laughs>